Fun fact, gel and glycine and gel and glucose come from the same Greek word, glycos. Sweet. So if you take anything from this video, take this. Glycine tastes like sugar. And by the way, it looks like sugar too. But unlike sugar and practically all sugar substitutes, it's quote unquote healthy. Yes, yes, those make the poison and healthy is a relative term. But it looks like everyone is talking about glycine today. So if you want to be in the know, I'm going to outline all the health and longevity benefits, optimal dose, considerations and limitations, and my own risk reward common sense approach. Two days ago, I was sitting and peacefully enjoying my glycine laced cacao when suddenly my phone went crazy. Thanks to a silly looking ad on TikTok, glycine gone viral. Introducing <laughs> Donghua Jean Long's food grade glycine. Unlock Donghua Jean Long's food grade glycine in 2024. Suitable as a flavor enhancer, sweetener, and everyone went searching, and my inbox just got overwhelmed with glycine questions. Some of them even legit. So, this video is a condensed answer science and my experience all in one place. Let's. Oh, oh, hold on a second. If you have an urge to share your favorite source of glycine, this video is for you as well. Let's go. So, glycine is a simple amino acid, a building block, if you will. It used to be on the list of the non essential amino acids, but lately it has been promoted into conditionally essential. And what is that supposed to mean? There is a trend towards, oops, you probably need more glycine than we used to think. Which means that most people, besides carnivore aficionados, might be deficient. To quote the study, thus, even though survival is not threatened by a shortage of glycine, the quality of life certainly is. I'll show you the calculations from that paper and the suggested dose in a minute, but why do we need glycine in the first place? As I said, glycine is a building block and it is involved in the production of collagen. Think your skin, connective tissues, those critty knees, elbows and shoulders. Creatine, think energy and building muscles. Neurotransmitters. Think focus and good sleep, not waking up to go to the bathroom multiple times through the night. Glutathione and detoxification. Think getting rid of pollutants, mold, benzene. And if you look at the methylation circle for a second, you can see that you can ramp it up with cysteine right here. Just add a gram of NAC and you're gonna make your own glyneck, which might be a good idea if you are over 40. And while here, there is one unique function of glycine. It works as a methylation buffer in this whole circle. Glycine saves you when you have too many methyl groups floating around, which might feel like racing thoughts, anxiety, sleep issues, depression, low motivation. On the blood tests, you might see low homocysteine or high SMEs. I had them all covered in details in my Circle of Life video about methylation circle and MTHFR mutations. You can check it later. But you don't really need to have that mutation. Overmethylation can happen to anyone. Bad dietary choices, toxins, medications, or just too much vitamin B complex all can lead to this roller coaster of anxiety and depression. On the other hand, let me play devil's advocate here. All these problems and symptoms are not necessarily caused by methylation cycle. When we talk about the circle, every issue sounds like, oh my god, it's a methylation problem. When we discuss insulin, everything suddenly becomes glucose control and insulin resistance. When we talk about testosterone, everything suddenly becomes low T. It's a variation of the medical student syndrome. Every medical school warns the students. When you study a subject, be ready to experience the symptoms even if you are not sick. A prime example of psychosomatic mind-to-body connections we all have and share. That's where you have to talk ideally with a doctor who knows you personally 
and can get a full 360 picture without over focusing on one tiny piece. That said, if you just try glycine powder and suddenly your sleep improves, well, who am I to say otherwise? Now, let's look at that paper again. What they have calculated that for optimal performance and unimpeded collagen production, you need about 15 grams of glycine daily if you're about 70 kilos. So you might be almost 10 grams short. And of course, it depends on your diet and on your age. The older you are, the more you have to pay attention to this stuff. Also, keep in mind that it's just calculations and math, so you have to take it with a grain of, well, glycine. <laughs> But human study of Glynec is also pointing into this good, positive direction. That said, again, to be devil's advocate, nobody has tested glycine on humans long term. And one of the reasons this channel exists, and why I'm talking to you, is that so one day, hopefully sooner than later, we can fund this kind of longevity and anti-aging studies, which are long term. But as of today, we just have to rely on common sense and do some mental risk-reward-cost-benefit ratio analysis. Which in my case goes like this. It's not a pill, because I can only take that many pills a day. It's pure and clean powder, tastes sweet, very easy to take, no major side effects if you take just a little. Diversifies my sugar substitutes like allulose and monk's fruit has a bunch of positive long-term outcomes and at the minimum it helps me to sleep better today, which can be a placebo, but this stuff is so damn cheap that whatever. If it works, it works, I'll take it. And did I already say that it tastes like sugar? So, my preferred way is to mix it up with some coca, coca via, because high polyphenols and low heavy metals, add a spoon of glycine, homemade cashew milk, hot but not boiling water, and we get a perfect relaxing drink for the late afternoon. Get some NAC with that, and you got yourself a homemade Glynec, which is a separate subject, but also looks promising. And did I already say that it tastes like sugar? <laughs> well, just kidding. Yes, glycine can work great as sugar substitute in the right dose, but you also have to realize that sugar as well depends on the dose. Can be bad, can be good, or even can be a tool which helps you to judge your own metabolic health. And you absolutely need to have this full picture, which I specifically cover in this short and sweet <laughs> video. Living is smart, aging is bad, and I'll see you there.